In this video, we're going to start looking at some further work with differentiation. To begin with, I'm going to sketch a curve. So let's go ahead and do that. And I'm going to say that this now is y is equal to the f of x. So this is just some function of x. The curve might look something like so. So y is equal to the f of x. If we start on the left-hand side, we can see at this point right here, we have a positive gradient. So if I drew a tangent line to a point in this particular region, I'd have now a positive gradient on that tangent. So the tangent may look something like this at the point here. As we come round here, we can see that the gradient of the tangent will still be positive. We have what we call an increase in function. There will come a point just around here, though, where the gradient is zero. So if we drew a tangent line, we would have now a tangent that will be parallel to the x-axis. If we then consider the gradient to the right of this particular point, we're going to have a negative gradient right here. Or we could say that this is a decreasing function in this particular interval. So if I look now, and let's just say that my function started here, let's go ahead and do that, we could say now that in this particular interval, this is an increasing function. We have a stationary point or turning point just here, and then we can say in this particular interval or thereabouts, we have a decreasing function. So if I drew now the tangent, the gradient of the tangent at all of these points is going to be negative. We will come down and we will still have this negative gradient just here. And then eventually we will end up now with another stationary point. So if we then consider a stationary point, that will be just there. In this particular case, we would call this a local maximum and this one a local minimum. We can see now to the other side of this stationary point or turning point, we are again going to have now a positive gradient. So let's go ahead and look now at this. We can say that the function is increasing in the interval just here. We can say the function is stationary. In this interval right here, the function is decreasing, the function is stationary, and then it's increasing again. In this video, we're going to look at some work with increasing and decreasing functions. We say that a function is increasing if now the gradient is positive for all values of x in that particular interval. Now, clearly not all graphs are going to have points where we're increasing, stationary or decreasing. Let's just take a, a, an example and a really, really straightforward example. Let's say we had now a linear equation. Let's say we had now y is equal to, let's go ahead and do that. Let's say that this now, y is equal to x plus 2. Clearly, this is increasing for all values of x. So that one, quite nice and straightforward. If we had now some other linear function, let's say our linear function was y is equal to minus 1 half x. So let's put this on. Let's say y is equal, and we'll just jot it here, y is equal to uh, minus 1 half x, and then we're going to have, let's say, plus 2.5. This is going to be decreasing for all values of x. If we look, for example, now at an exponential function, let's say we had now y is equal to 2 to the x. 2 to the x is increasing for all values. We'll come up like so. So y is equal to 2 to the x. We might have something different. Let's say we've got now y is equal to 1 over x. Let's now consider a reciprocal function. And for values now, let's go to the right. Let's just say we've got now, let's define this to be y is equal to 1 over x, where we have x strictly greater than 0. Now, if we consider this here, if I drew a tangent at any point to that curve, I appreciate that's not brilliant, that curve, but if we had now any point right here, we would have now a negative gradient. So we could say that this function was decreasing for all values of x. Wherever we go, we're going to be decreasing. Quite clearly at this point, it's going to be more subtle. So how do we know that this is decreasing? Well, let's take some idea of this. And let's just say now y is equal to, let's say y is equal to x to the power of minus 1. That's 1 over x. If we take the derivative dy by dx, this is the gradient function. We multiply down by the power and drop the power by 1. So we could write this now as minus 1 over x squared. Clearly, for all positive values of x now, so all values greater than 0, we have a negative gradient. So what can we say? 
if we have now an increase in function, and let's write this here, increase in function, when we take the derivative dy by dx, or we could say f dash of x, for an increase in function, this will always be greater than zero for all values of x in that interval. If we have f dash of x, again, we could say that that's greater than zero. So this is an increase in function. So if we think about now a particular function, let's make this nice and straightforward. Let's take now y is equal to x squared. So if I take y is equal to x squared, let's just go ahead and do that. Now, quite clearly, we can see where this is going to be an increase in and a decrease in function. So we've got this point right here, 0, 0. This now is y is going to be equal now to x squared. Therefore, dy by dx will be a linear function, and that will be 2x. Clearly, for values less than 0, this is going to be a decrease in function. That is, the gradient of the tangent now is going to be negative. And then what will happen, we will come down to this point right here, and this gradient will get flatter and flatter to the point now where we have a stationary point. So that stationary point, or if you like, in this particular case, a turning point, is where x is going to be equal to 0. And we know that. If dy by dx is 2x, if we sub in now x is 0, we get a straight line. Then quite clearly, all values that are to the right here of 0 is going to give us now a positive gradient. So we can see then, if the derivative dy by dx is greater than 0, we're going to have now an increase in function. Let's consider now the decrease in function. If we have a decrease in function, the derivative or gradient function dy by dx is going to be less than 0. Or, if you like, f dashed of x will be now less than 0. If we have now a stationary point, and I'm not using the, the term turning point in all cases as, uh, for a reason, and we will see shortly in the, in the next video. For now, a uh, stationary point, let's put stationary point. That is where the gradient is going to be equal to 0. We can say that dy by dx will be equal to 0, or the derivative f dashed of x will be equal to 0. So that just gives us some idea. So let's go ahead and look at this now, and I'll get a graphing calculator with some function. So this looks like now a cubic function. So we could say, in fact, it looks like x cubed plus 1. Um, so it's some function. Now what we have here, as we can see, as I move this down, we've got an increase in function for now these negative values. Okay? We can see it's given now to be 12. That is going to get very steep as we go further to the left, so as we get more and more negative. Then what we're going to do is come up, and then we will gradually now become less steep in terms of the tangent. So we can see that the gradient of the tangent is getting less and less to the point now where I come round, and that now is essentially a gradient of 1. Then we'll turn this round, and then all of a sudden now we are going to be stationary. And that now gives us a point. So if we think about now this curve, let's say that was the curve. So let's go ahead. Let's say that that was y is equal to x cubed plus 1. dy by dx is going to be equal now to 3x squared. We multiply down by the power and drop the power by 1. So let's just think about now values of x. We can see if x is going to be less than 0, this now is going to give us a positive value. So if we think about this now, if I put mi a minus number in, we know that's always going to be positive. So 3 times positive number. When we have x equal to 0, we're going to have now a gradient. Remember, this is our gradient function. We're going to have a gradient of 0. For values greater than 0 now, we're going to have an increase in function. So what we have here is a function that is increasing, it's stationary, and then it's increasing again. And in later videos, we'll introduce the idea of what we call a point of inflection. Um, but for now, we just want to look at the gradients. So if we come back here, what we'll see now is when we've gone past this point here of x is equal to 0, we can see the function again is increasing and increasing incredibly quickly, as we can see by the gradient here. So what we've got then is a function. So if we put on plus, 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 uh, plus, 0, plus, 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 and so on and so forth. OK, so that gives us an idea now of what an increase in function and a decrease in function may look like.
So let's go ahead and work on a few of these. What I want to do is start with a very nice basic case. I'm going to take a function and I'm going to say the f of x is equal to, and we'll just take a quadratic to begin with. Let's say we're going to have, uh, we'll go for x squared, let's go for x squared plus 2x minus 3. And what we want to do is find now the set of values for which this is an increasing function and a decreasing function. So let's think what we've got here. This is a quadratic equation. Now, could I factor that? Let's go ahead and try that. That's going to be x, uh, what we're going to have, x plus 3, and then we're going to have now x minus 1. So we could say the f of x is going to be equal now to the product of these two linear factors. So that looks like it's going to factor. Now, if I drew this, what we're going to have is the following scenario. We're going to have a, po a positive solution of 1. Let's put that on. So if we put this just here, that's going to be 1. We're going to have 1 at minus 3, and then we're going to also have 1 at minus 3. Let's put that just there. So what we'll have then is something that looks like this. So we'll come round, we'll come down to that point right there, and then we'll come back through. So it would seem logical that there's some point just here, such now that we will have a gradient that goes from being negative just here, like so, like so, to being now zero. And that will be what we call our stationary point. Or in this particular case, we would call this a global, uh, sorry, a local, uh, a local, um, a local minimum point. If it was a, a negative quadratic, we would have a local maximum. And then, of course, there's going to be some point up here where we're going to be increasing. Now, you might be saying to yourself, well, I kind of think that I remember doing something like this. Now, if we completed the square, we would find the minimum point, And that's what we've looked at in the past. Differentiation also allows us to do that. This time, though, we can see the points for which this will be an increasing function, a stationary function, and a decreasing function. So let's go ahead now and find the derivative. f dashed of x, which is the gradient function, is going to be 2x plus 2. So that's given me my gradient function. So we can say for it to be an increasing, for increasing, let's put this here, we can say now that 2x plus 2 must now be greater than 0. This is a gradient function. It's got to be bigger than 0. So just solving this, x is going to be greater than minus 1. Now, of course, if we completed the square on this, we would get x plus 1 all squared, and then we'd have minus 4. So that minimum point right here is going to be minus 1, comma, minus 4. So we can kind of back this up now with the derivative and also using completing the square. So for all values now of x being greater now than minus 1, this is an increasing function. And quite clearly, if we put for decreasing function, so for decreasing, we could say now that the 2x plus 2 is going to be less than 0. And we solve for the value of x. So here we can see, and again, we can just look at that anyway, x is going to be less now than minus 1. And now for the stationary point, let's put this here, for sp stationary point, we can say that x will be equal to minus 1. So that gives us a nice kind of idea of something that we can get our heads around because we know the minimum point right here is going to be increasing to the right and then decreasing to the left. Okay, let's do another one. Let's take a cubic this time. So what we're going to have is a cubic. Now, if I take the derivative of a cubic, I'm going to get a quadratic. So what we'll have then, let's say f of x is equal to, we'll go for x cubed, uh, let's go for minus 6x squared plus 2. So we want now the set of values for which this function is increasing, decreasing, and then the x-coordinate of a stationary point or stationary points. So let's think about this now. What we're going to have is the derivative. So what we can write now is f dashed of x is going to be 3x squared. Then we're going to have now minus 12x. So let's consider now what we've got f dashed of x will be greater than 0 for an increase in function. So what we can state now is the following. Let's go ahead and do that. So we will have f dashed of x is going to be greater, let's write this here, f dashed of x greater than 0 now for increasing. So what we'll do is just jot this down. So we can say then, and I'm just going to factor this, 3x, then we'll have x minus 4 is going to be greater 
than zero. Now, if we look at this right here, what we have is a quadratic inequality. So I'm going to consider now the regions for which this is an increasing function. And doing this, what I'm going to do is just now draw my little sketch. So what we're going to have then with this inequality, we're going to have the point here and the point here. We've got now zero and then we've got now four. So let's put this on. So we've got zero, zero, and then we've got four, zero. We want to know where this is going to be greater than zero. So going back to our work with quadratic inequalities, we can see now that it's going to be this particular region here. That is where now this derivative or gradient function is going to be greater than zero. So if we think about this now, we're going to have, and we'll write this down, x, so we can say that x will be less than zero, or now x is going to be greater than four. So that now gives me the increasing function. If we want to know where this is decreasing, if we think about this now to be decreasing, well, that's where f dashed, and we can write this here, f dashed of x is less than zero for a decreasing function. So just jotting this down, decreasing. So if we consider now where this is less than zero, and I'll just write this down, uh, we're going to have 3x, x minus 4 is less than zero. Well, that's this point right here. So let's do that. And then we will just shade this part in right here. So that's where now the quadratic inequality is going to give us less than zero. So we've got now that x is going to be between, and we're going to have now 0 and 4. So this gives us now the decreasing function. Remember, this is a cubic function. So the cubic function now, if we just think about a sketch of a cubic equation, let's do a really rough sketch, we might have something that looks like this. So we can see that we've got now an increasing, increasing, increasing. We've got now stationary, decreasing, 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 stationary, increasing, increasing, increasing. So where is this stationary? Well, what we can say at this point right here, for SP, the stationary point, the derivative dy by dx, we've got dy by dx is going to be equal to zero. Or in this particular case, f dashed of x is going to be zero. So all we need to do, again, is just take this expression and equate it to zero. 3x, then we're going to have x minus 4 is equal to zero. So it will be stationary when x is going to be zero or when x is going to be equal to 4. So I'd use those time and time again, but again, you would just simply consider this to be a quadratic inequality, and you would then look at the regions that satisfy the particular um, constraints or particular requirements. So for a decreasing function, the gradient is less than zero. For an increasing function, it's going to be greater than zero. For now, a stationary point, the derivative is going to be zero. Remember, this is now the gradient function for a cubic. So if we have a quartic, the gradient function is a cubic. If we have a cubic, the gradient function is a quadratic. If we have a quadratic, the gradient function is a linear. We're simply now reducing by a power of x. So there we go, brief introduction to increasing and decreasing functions.